Bali, the island of God, has been attracted many people from around the world to visit because of its magical culture and amazing landscapes. But below this paradise, there is another paradise, the underwater life. The colorful coral reef. Some of them are really small. Some of them are huge. There we will go later, Bali underwater. Our first destination is Menjangan Island. This small island located at the northwest of Bali within the West Bali National Park. To get there, we start from a harbor village called Pemutran and cross the strait by a traditional fishing wooden boat. Dive sites in Menjangan are dominated by wall with high diversity of gorgonians. The gorgonians are look like plant, but they are not plant. They are included in Pilum Osnidaria of Animal Kingdom. Gorgonians use their polyps to feed themselves with plankton and organic debris. Hiding among the Gorgonian branch, there is a tiny creature, a macro photographer's favorite thing to photograph. This little guy is a master of camouflage. Only good spotter with a patience will find them among the Gorgonian's branches. A Bargibon seahorse body length is less than 15 mm. They are included among the smallest fishes in the world. Bargibon seahorse has the same color and shape with their host to avoid the predator. This fragile species is very sensitive with the strange things around them. A bright flash of camera and torch could make them blind and leave the Gorgonian. Even the body contact with the divers will make them stress to die. Our next dive destination is Tulamben Bay. Along the line shore are busy fishermen villages with their traditional outrigger fishing boats. Mount Agung, the holy mountain, has blessed Tulamben Sea with its volcanic sands from its eruptions, which is very good to fertilize the reef life. Tulamben Sea is the sea with the highest diversity of reef life in Bali. Mount Agung also has changed the USS Liberty Shipwreck from the metal ruins into one of the most beautiful shipwrecks in the world. The 
Liberty was an American cargo ship torpedoed by Japanese army at January 1942 and totally sunk at 1963 after the eruption of Mount Agung. This 120 meters length shipwreck now covered by hard and soft coral and became habitat of 100 species of fishes, shrimps, worms, and other reef creatures. One of the most interesting creatures in the Liberty is leaf scorpion fish. I'm sure you know why is it named leaf scorpion fish. This species is a residential species. They have very low mobility. They hunting by waiting the prey, which is don't realize their appearance because of their camouflage. Most of leaf scorpion fish stay at their host coral for their whole life. Another unique creature in the liberty is duster worm. Duster worm feed themselves by catching organic debris, plankton and other microorganisms with their feeders. As their cousin duster worm, Christmas tree worms also catching food with their feeder and very sensitive with unfamiliar movement around them. They have many variations of color and beautiful shape. They are more look like flowers than worms. From its hole, a mantis shrimp coming out to hunt. The scientist's research has proved that mantis shrimp is the creatures with the most complex eyes. And the strangest creatures at liberty is this guy, a worthy frogfish. A frogfish has a sponge-like body, and it uses its back fin not to swim, but to walk or climb as legs for mammals. This ugly fish is one of photographers' favorite because they are unique and hard to find. Now, the Liberty visited by hundreds of divers, free divers, and snorkelers every day. Liberty is the most crowded dive sites in Bali. Now, she will never be lonely, with her chamber and passage filled by divers. Increase the level of damage of the fragile coral reef. The high numbers of divers are coming every day during the year. This is not a good thing for the marine life too. But this is a good thing for the local community. The Liberty has helped the local to get their income by working as porters, helpers, and boatmen. Near from the Liberty, the sea bottom is covered by rich and fertilized black sand. The garden eels standing facing the mild current offer their pit to feed themselves with the plankton which float with the current. They don't even need to leave their pit to hunt the food.
all the sandy bottoms, the nudge branch crumbling while eating. These shell-less snails are poisonous. It is indicated by their bright colors as a warning to the predator to avoid them. More than 20 species of nudie branch are found in Tulamben area. Other citizens of Tulamben area are from Crustacea pilum, such as shrimps and crabs. And most of them are master of camouflage. The squids also coming to this place to lay their eggs after the mating season. And hawkbill sea turtles sometimes appear to feed themselves here after a long journey. Now we move to the southeast of Bali, Amok Bay area. One of the most important harbor in Bali is in Amok Bay area. Padang Bay Harbor is a busy harbor which is connecting Bali to Lombok. Boat and ship's activities has destroyed the coral reef near the harbor. But under the jetty, you will find high diversity and individual numbers of fishes. This is also one of favorite dive sites for macro photography. The moray eels may be look scary with their sharp teeth, but moray are actually less harm to divers than a fire coral. There is no record of divers attacked by moray eels. Moray eels stay in their pit during the day. They leave the pit to hunt during the night. The bigger version of warty frogfish that we saw at Tulambin is this guy, a giant frogfish. But compared with his cousin, giant frogfish is lazier than the warty one, with its camouflage as a stone or sponge and an angler below its upper lip. A giant frogfish will stay at the spot for a long time, without moving, waiting for the prey to come to try eating the angler at its mouth. This silent guy is more harm than the more ill. The scorpion fish has poisonous sting at their fins 
and they have a good camouflage. This beautiful creature is a jewel at Jetty Dive site, a lazy rhinopius with its beautiful pattern and petal like on its body and fins. Rhinopias is more look like a moth or butterfly than a fish. The scientist hasn't find logical answer of what is the pattern and the petal like on its body for. Near the jetty, the bottom is dominated by rubble of dead coral with poor visibility and the sea grass. Move a few kilometers to the northwest, we go to Chadidasa area. This area is formed by rock pinnacle and small islands. They are Biaha, Gili Tepekong, and Mimpang. Diving here requires a serious attention to the dive briefing. Because of the current, sometimes can be very strong, tricky, and unpredictable. The underwater topography are formed by lateral cavern. Some are penetrable when the current is mild. This is the right place to encounter the sharks. This site is famous as the shark point. Here, the white deep reef sharks is still in high population. White deep reef sharks is a small shark. They only have 2 meters length and harmless to the diver. There is no record that a white deep reef shark has attacked the divers. On the bottom, composition of the reef are from the field of Halimena grass wide range of lettuce, corals, staghorn corals, and the duster worms.
Our last destination is a very special place to dive. Nusa Pnida. This magical island is formed by a limestone, which is in the same part has very unique shape because of its geological process. October, many divers from around the world come to Nusa Penida with one expectation, encounter the mola or sunfish. Because of the potential hazard of depth and current, the mola dive require a special dive briefing. Nusa Penida is located between Bali and Indian Ocean. During June to October, a strip of cold water from the south rising as a thermocline to the shallower part. The sunfish is a deep water fish. They don't like warm water. They only go up to the shallow part for annual cleaning ritual by following the cold water stream. And it is the only chance for divers to encounter and photograph them. When the sunfish is in vertical position, it means the sunfish is ready to be cleaned. The banner fishes will come and eat the parasite from its skin, and it will stand for a couple minutes until the parasite's gone or sunfish are feeling unsafe with the divers around it. The normal size of mola is 2 or 3 meters, but the record said the maximum size is up to 6 meter length. Unfortunately, many divers couldn't help themselves to get too close to the mola that will make the mola abort the cleaning process and move to a safer spot to do a cleaning process. When the cleaning is finished, the mola will swim very fast to the surface and sometimes jump out and make a big splash before they come back to the deep ocean. And finally, we move to another part of Nusa Penida to meet the most friendly and the gracious one the Mantaray. The Mantaray found solitaire or in a small group on the feeding station. The Mantaray are huge, but this giant only feed themselves with plankton. Unlike the other ray species, Monterey are stingless and they are friendly and curious with the diver. During the mating season, the small group of males will fight and the winner will be mating with the female. The Mantor 8 mating process is a very attractive dance, and it is a rare chance to see the mating dance.
Diving has proved that humans can live together with marine life without destroying it. But we never know when will this environment will change.